This is the Doubles Only Tennis Podcast, where you learn the best tips and strategies in the world to help you become a smarter, more effective tennis player. You'll hear interviews with pro tour doubles players and coaches, including easy to use lessons to improve your game and win more matches. My name is Will Bocek, founder of the Tennis Tribe, doubles strategy coach, and host of the show. Hey everyone, uh, last week I promised you a strategy episode, so that is what you are going to get today. Um, this is a episode that's been in the queue for a while. It was requested um, probably four or five, maybe six months ago by uh, a listener of the show in California named Guy. Uh, hello Guy, if you're listening to this, um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, And what we're going to cover is how to improve, and we're specifically going to look at improving from the 4.0 to the 4.5 level. So uh, if you've been listening for a while, then you know uh, back in December, I got bumped up from 4.5 to 5.0, and I'll talk a little bit about that in this episode. Uh, But more importantly, I'm going to talk about how to kind of diagnose within your game the area that you need to improve. So hopefully I can give you a framework to at least um, figure out which kind of lever you need to pull. Um, It could be uh, working on a particular stroke. It could be um, focusing on strategy a little more uh, or something else entirely. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how to do that. And if you're not a 4.0, then this will still help you. Uh, If you're a 4.5, if you're a 3.0, It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm really going to focus on kind of the process of improvement uh, as far as how I see it and uh, based on kind of what I've um, experienced myself as well as what I've learned from a lot of other uh, top coaches uh, around the country. So the place I want to start is um, what what are the differences between a 4.0 and a 4.5 player? So obviously the 4.5 player is better uh, that's why they're rated um, a little bit higher. Uh, but what are the actual differences? So um, there can be a, a variety of uh, ways to improve your game. And it all comes down to two different areas. So if you're a 4-0 and you've been trying to get to 4-5 for a while, or even a 3-0 trying to get to 3-5, um, whatever it is, uh, there's only two ways you can really improve your game. Um, maybe there's a third, uh, which I'll mention, but, um, the way I see it is, is really, there's only two ways you can improve. One is you can improve technically. So that means improving your technique on your serve, your return, uh, your forehand, your backhand, your volleys, your overhead, things like that. So you might need improvement with your technique. The other area you can improve is your Uh, tactical approach to the game or your strategic approach to each match. So um, that essentially just means playing smarter. So again, technically, um, we have a lot of different strokes in tennis. Uh, You can improve each individual stroke. Um, Maybe you're at 4-0 and your forehand's really solid. You don't have any issues with that, but you face a lot of teams that are able to find your backhand ground stroke and it Um, Is it a, maybe your backhand's at a a 3-5 level, your forehand's at a 4-5 level, so you're stuck at the 4-0 level. So in that case, you need to improve your backhand from a 3-5 backhand to a 4-0 backhand or a 4-5 backhand. Um, Or another thing you can do is figure out ways to not hit backhands, Um, and that's uh, a totally different thing. Um. Examples of uh, technical issues we went over, um, serve, return, ground strokes, so that could be forehand or backhand, volleys, overheads. Tactical issues, um, this could be any number of things. Um, I see all the time at the 4-0 level, uh, um, a lot of players uh, hit down the line too often. They try to go for winners from the baseline because um, three points ago they were able to hit a forehand winner down the line and it worked. So why can't they do it every point? Um, the answer is simply that most points end in an error. So if you're trying to uh, hit winners from the baseline as your main strategy, then uh, you're probably um, leaving a lot on the table. So then 
In that case, you have a, a tactical problem. You have a strategic problem uh, and you need to improve your strategy by playing smarter, uh, trying to force errors, maybe trying to get to the net, um, playing higher percentage shots. Uh, another example of a tactical problem is going for too much on your first serve. I see a lot of players do this uh, at every level. Um, they try to hit these big bombing first serves and they just have a first serve percentage of like 45%. Um, so then they end up with a bunch of second serve points on their serve. They get broken a lot and they get stuck at uh, the 4 level. Um, so uh, there's a number of other tactical issues you could have. Um, maybe, uh, for example, you play at the baseline too much. I know that was the case for me um, five years ago once I really started getting back into doubles a lot more. Um, I uh, didn't transition to the net enough, so I added the serve and volley to my game. Um, it could be that uh, you have trouble with uh, returning um, cross court and you like to return down the line and that's a, a smart, uh, not a smart shot. But anyways, we could go through tons and tons of these, but you have to figure out for yourself, is it something technical or is it something tactical that you have to change to improve? So what di differences, I've covered a few of these, but what differences do I actually see when I go to tournaments or see league matches uh, in 4-0 and 4-5? So when I see the transition uh, from 4-0 to 4-5, one thing I notice is a lot of the kind of mechanical strokes start to disappear at the 4-5 level. So um, what I mean by that is, you know, when you're taught to uh, hit a forehand, for example, a lot of coaches teach it in you know, five or 10 steps or whatever, you know, turn your feet sideways, um, pull your racket back, uh, you know, hold the right Western grip or semi-Western grip, um, pull your racket back, swing up, brush the ball, kiss your elbow and so on. It's like a series of steps, but we're not robots. So um, that's not actually, uh, in my opinion, the best way to teach uh, a particular stroke. Uh, you see it more often with the serve, right? Put your hands together forward, drop your hands down, scratch your back, and so on. So um, a lot of the way that those coaches teach is, is very mechanical, kind of step by step. And that approach can get you, I, I feel like, to the 4-0 level, maybe to the 4-5 level. But at the 4-5 level, I start to see that kind of uh, um, kind of step by step stroke pattern disappear and players start to hit with more fluidity. Um, they hit with what looks like kind of less effort. Um, and uh, they hit kind of more, um, you know, more fluid ground strokes, uh, like I said. Um, one of the best coaches for teaching uh, these kind of fluid ground strokes, and, and um, he calls it the effortless game, uh, is Jack Brody, who I've had on the podcast before. Um, you can check out his website at Brody Tennis, uh, and he does a really good job of teaching, um, yeah, teaching strokes with a um, kind of rhythm instead of uh, a mechanical approach. So I, I feel like that starts to disappear uh, at the four or five level. Another thing is, um, and these are kind of correlated, uh, I see more spin and more pace on shots at the four or five level. Uh, spin's definitely a big one. Um, more people are uh, on the guy's side, able to hit kick serves, um, on the men's and women's sides, able to hit, uh, heavier ground strokes, um, and things like that. Uh, and then in general serves and overheads are better as well. Um, I see a lot of people get away with, uh, kind of the pancake grip at the, uh, four O level, um, on both serves and overheads. And that's why you see, uh, I think, a lot more lobbing at the four level because it's more effective because their overheads aren't quite as good. Uh, when you play somebody with that kind of pancake overhead grip, um, it's easier to lob them because they're going to make fewer overheads because they have their technique wrong. So those are all some kind of technical things I see. Um, strategic wise, the difference between 4-0 and 4-5, uh, I went over most of them. I, I feel like 4-0 players... Um, you know, they might have a huge forehand or a huge serve and they, they try to win from the baseline. 
uh, and go for too much rather than kind of developing the point and playing a little smarter. Um, so uh, that that's kind of the big differences I see uh, tactically and strategically. So what can you actually do with this information? Um, the first step for you is to decide, uh, is it technical? Is it a technical issue or is it a tactical issue that I have? Um, the best way to do that is um, go out and watch players who are a level above you. Um, so if you're a 4-0, go watch some 4-5 players. Uh, one thing that might even be better is to play against them. Uh, and if you can get it on film, uh, you can watch yourself on the court versus some of the other players. And um, does it look like you have a, a technical issue um, where you're not able to generate as much pace or as much spin or um, you don't have the accuracy on a particular stroke or you miss it a lot? Um, usually people know what their weakness is, uh, and you can know if it's a technical issue. Uh, if it's a tactical issue, um, it's probably because you just haven't thought a lot about strategy. Uh, the best way to fix that um, is probably to to listen to the first several episodes of this podcast. Um, I'll link in the show notes to the four-part series um, that teach you kind of the foundations of double strategy, uh, and that can help a lot as well. But if you do have a tactic, or, or I'm sorry, a technical issue, um, how can you improve? So let's say um, for me, my backhand technique is is really bad. Um, I haven't really worked on it a whole lot since I play doubles. I'm able to hide it, um, but my backhand technique is bad. My forehand uh, technique is solid. My serve technique uh, has improved a lot the past three or so years because I've focused on it a lot more. So how can you improve your technique? Uh, one is use a ball machine or find a good coach and you just need to get a lot of good reps in um, so that you trust this new technique. Uh, obviously, you'll have to change the technique that you're using now. So for me, you know, I would have to change the back my backhand technique and then it's going to feel uncomfortable at first and then I just need a lot of reps. Um, so that would mean Again, finding a coach who can feed a lot of balls to me or getting a ball machine and setting up targets and just work on it. Just hit the target, hit the target, hit the target. Um, and eventually that new technique will feel more comfortable uh, and you will uh, improve that way. Um, finding a good coach is a little bit tougher, especially for technique. Um, I've talked about in the past how a lot of coaches, I really don't um, 100% trust them to coach technique. Uh, and it's one reason that I personally don't coach it myself because um, I don't trust myself to to coach it because I feel like it requires a ton of experience with a ton of different players. And um, it's a very, very complex issue. A few years back, I worked with Warren Pretorius over at Tennis Analytics on a course for coaches to help them uh, improve their students' technique. And I learned a lot um, when I was building that course with him. So there's a few things you want to look for kind of in a coach. Uh, one is d don't let them talk too much. Uh, if they're over-talking and if you have a 30-minute or an hour lesson and they're spending 30% of the time uh, sitting with you, not hitting balls and, and just talking to you and kind of shadow swinging and showing you um, your elbow's doing this and it needs to do this, that's far, far less effective uh, than actually just setting up targets um, and feeding you balls and just telling you, you know, small things like, hey, make sure you're keeping your elbow in. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Keep doing that. Yeah, do that again. Do that again. So um, if they're over talking and, and trying to show you how to swing by imitating it themselves, then that's um, typically not a great sign because people don't uh, learn motor skills, which tennis is. Um, any tennis stroke is a motor skill uh, as well through audio, through hearing it from someone as they do visually. So uh, one of the best things that you can do is actually get video of yourself um, hitting your backhand or whatever the stroke is and then putting it side by side and syncing up that video with someone who has a proper backhand. And then 
you can watch that video and see the differences between your own stroke and someone else's stroke. And that, um, that kind of does something in your brain that uh, kind of connects the, the motor pathway of the stroke so that you can actually um, make the proper adjustments. Uh, uh, there, there's been um, several studies on it that have proven that you know, visual works a lot better than audio for motor skills. Um, and that's what we talk about uh, in the course with tennis analytics. Um, so that's definitely... Uh, a far, far better way to improve your technique. So um, I'd highly recommend getting video of yourself, uh, getting video of a better um, version of that stroke and, and kind of looking at the differences um, and then go out and just get a lot of reps. Um, so again, technique versus tactical, decide that and then figure out how you can improve that thing. Um, if you have any questions on how to improve your own game, uh, definitely reach out. Uh, my email is will at the tennis tribe.com. Um, and I will uh, have another episode in a few weeks. Uh, I'm going to try to get some more um, pro players on since we did the really big uh, Indian Wells um, pro doubles launch. Um, so we should have more uh, episodes coming like that soon. Uh, but again, if you have any questions or any feedback, uh, definitely uh, reach out to me and I will talk to you in the next episode. If you're a doubles player, you'll love our weekly doubles newsletter. Every Thursday, we send you doubles tips and strategies to help you improve your game and become a smarter player. When you sign up, you'll get a free 10-page guide on how to play with more confidence and dominate at the net in doubles. You can go to thetennistribe.com to sign up now.